Hello and welcome to Scale War Machines. Here's a quick mini guide on how to make convincing chrome metal parts. Here we go. We love making rusty wrecks here at Scale War Machines, partly for an occasional break from purely military subjects, but mostly as a test bed for different painting and weathering techniques. In our salt chipping video, we featured our 124 scale Tamiya VW Beetle. One area we never fully showed was how we tackled the chrome parts on a rusty subject like our bug. The problem with plastic kit chrome parts is that they can seem fake or toy-like. Because they are plasticky and shiny, this can lead to a lack of scale realism. As you'll see, we can use different techniques to depict realistic weathered chrome. The first option is to keep the shiny base, but weather it, which we will do by applying painting effects over the chrome. The other option is to strip the pieces back to their bare plastic and start again with a whole new paint job. We decided to keep some of the chrome parts as is, but to dull them down we first mist a thin rust coat over the pieces. The paint mix is Red Brown Primer and SS Camouflage Black Brown by Vallejo, mixed in equal amounts and with about 30% thinner, then sprayed at very low pressure. By using this low pressure, your airbrush will splatter and speckle the paint to create dots depicting surface rust. This airbrush technique is often called stippling. Here you can see the result on various components. The effect is to replicate chrome that still has its gleam but is dotted with corrosion. If you want to strip off the fake looking chrome completely for a different look, it's easy, just use household bleach. Take the parts off the sprue, add some bleach to a bowl and then soak. You can see the bleach strips away the chrome effect. With the plastic rinsed then dried, you can attach the parts ready for painting. After a coat of Vallejo Primer, painting can begin. We start with some rust shades applied with our Iwata Eclipse airbrush, Red Brown Primer and SS Camouflage Black Brown by Vallejo is sprayed over the bumpers as a base coat. We then reach for the excellent rust shades in Life Colors Dust and Rust Diorama set. We spray some of their rust base shade over the parts. Again, you can see in these shots that the paint is not sprayed evenly, but stippled to create speckles of rust. Next, we take two enamel shades, Oily Steel by Extra Colour and Humbrol Metal Coat Polished Aluminium. We spray the metal coat loosely over the rust, again making sure it's uneven and speckled in parts. Next, it's time to unify everything and add some orangey rust tones. For this, we use Life Colors Light Rust Shadow 1. We apply an even light coat over most of the part, but add more colouring around where rust would accumulate. We test the part on the model to see how it looks. Because the Humbrol metal coat is polishable, we burnish it with a cotton bud or Q-tip to get a bit of shine. Here you can see the contrasting techniques. The bumper and right hand light is much duller and more corroded. The left hand light is shiny but dotted with rust. To add a bit of shine to the painted parts, we apply a little reflecting agent pigment from Life Colour. We apply it to the highlights on the bumper as well. We then attach the parts to the model and it starts to take shape. To paint the chrome parts, we mask them off using Tamiya masking tape and then spray with extra colour oily steel. We repeat this for all the window chrome. And here's the end result. Rather than shiny and toy-like plastic chrome parts, they are weathered and painted to match a rusty wreck. Don't forget to give us a Facebook like or to join our Google Plus community. Add scale war machines to your favourites and stay tuned for more how-to guides. Subscribe for our latest videos.